Hi, this is Manos Brilakis, and this is video 24.1 for the Manual of Percutaneous Coronary Intervention. This video discusses coronary angiography and percutaneous coronary intervention in patients with transcatheter aortic valve replacement. TAVER can affect several of the 14 steps of percutaneous coronary intervention, with the step being the most affected being coronary engagement, as the aortic valve prosthesis sits often between the coronary ostia and the catheters. Here are some common questions for planning, revascularization of the coronary arteries in TAVER patients. The first one is in patients who have both severe AS and severe coronary artery disease, which one should be done first? And the second is to use pre-procedural non-invasive imaging if they have had TAVER to determine the optimal way and the difficulty of coronary engagement. This is a patient who has severe aortic stenosis as well as severe left main coronary artery disease. The question here is whether TAVER should be performed first or coronary revascularization should be performed first. And there are pluses and minuses in both ways. The biggest advantage of performing coronary revascularization first is that it avoids any potential difficulties with accessing the coronary artery after TAVER is performed. The disadvantage is that coronary revascularization can be higher risk in the setting of severe aortic stenosis. Also, there is a need for repeat vascular access to subsequently performed TAVER, which makes it less convenient for the patient. If a patient has had TAVER, having pre-procedural CT can help determine the location of the coronary ostia in relationship with the commissural posts of the aortic valve prosthesis, as well as the scared height. Given potential challenges for engaging coronary artery, femoral access is generally preferred. Engagement can be challenging, as discussed, for various reasons that have to do with the patient's anatomy and the prosthetic valve. In general, having the core valve evolute makes it much harder for accessing the coronary arteries compared with the sapient valve. Also, a higher valve implantation makes it harder to engage, as well as when the commissural posts are aligned with the coronary ostia. Some other aspects of the patient's anatomy determine the difficulty of engaging. For example, the width of the sinus of Alsalva. The, wide, the wider it is, the easier it is to engage the coronary arteries. Also, the higher the coronary ostia, the easier to engage. And the less bulky and the shorter the native coronary leaflets are, the easier it is to also engage the coronary arteries. This is an example of uh, a regular implantation and high implantation. The higher the implantation, the harder it is, it is to engage the coronary arteries because the arteries can be below the ceiling skirt of the valve. Also, if uh, we are unlucky enough to have the commissural post line up with the coronary ostia, that makes it much harder to engage because then one has to go from a cell that is adjacent to the commissural posts. How can engagement be facilitated? The first one is to use different catheters. Also, sometimes advancing a guide wire into the coronary artery can help uh, act as a rail to advance the catheter. Guide extensions can be very useful. And sometimes non-selective injections might suffice to determine the coronary anatomy. Various catheters can be used for the left coronary artery. Standard Judkins left are used, often the shorter ones, but also the XB and EBU guides are used with a potential risk of entrapment of the guide catheter. For the right, usually Judkins right are used. And this is the potential risk with the left guides. If the guide is pointed up, and we're trying to remove it, then it, there is potential for the guide catheter to kink and being unable to remove it. What should be done is use a guide wire, potentially the back end of an O35 guide wire, to straighten the guide because then it makes it easier to be removed from the prosthetic valve. This is an example of a patient who has had a core valve to engage the valve, one uses a J-wire to get into the valve frame and then advances the catheter. In this case, this is a JL4 catheter. 
aiming to cross through the valve and engage the coronary ostium. In this case, the initial crossing was fairly high. We see we're very high in the aorta. So the catheter was repositioned once again using a J-wire to get through the valve frame and then advance in the JL a little bit deeper this time in an attempt to get it closer to the coronary ostia. We see now the crossing is a little further down. But unfortunately, even now, we're not completely engaged. So in this, um, in this case, the coronary catheter is above the coronary ostium. What can be done? One option would be to use a guide wire. However, that would make it difficult still to advance the catheter all the way. The other option is to use a guide extension. Clearly here, no selective injection does not suffice because the opacification of the coronary artery is suboptimal. So what was done here is a six friends guide extension was used going through the, the cells of the valve. It can be hard to visualize the body of the guide extension, but here is the tip. And then uh, that allowed engagement, actually subselective engagement of the circumflex and good visualization of the coronary artery that did not have any significant lesions. Sometimes engaging the right coronary artery can actually be harder. Also, in this case, we have valve and valve, which makes it even harder. In this particular patient, despite using multiple catheters, we were actually unable to selectively engage the right coronary artery to perform PCI of this right coronary artery chronic total occlusion. Coronary engagement is easier with the sapient valve as there, there is less metallic frame of the valve. Still, if uh, the coronary ostia are positioned behind uh, the commissural post, that can make it harder. And also, if there is high implantation, that can make engagement of the coronary artery harder. Patients who have um, TAVR are often older and have complex coronary artery disease, often with, often with heavy calcification. They often have chronic total occlusions and bifurcation lesions as well. And that requires good lesion preparation as well as usual physiology and imaging to optimize the result. A note of caution for using FFR in patients with severe aortic stenosis. What has been found is that after the valve is replaced, the FFR actually significantly decreases, whereas there is no significant change in the non-hyperemic indices such as the IFR. Therefore, the FFR might underestimate the severity of coronary stenosis in patients with severe aortic stenosis prior to TAVR, and therefore non-hyperemic indices should be preferred in this setting. And finishing up with hemodynamic support, there is a word of caution if an impella is used in patients who have previous TAVR, specifically with um, uh, the Evolute valve, because uh, the struts of the frame may actually interfere with the impeller and lead to fracture of uh, the impeller blades. And that can lead to low flow as well as embolization. So impellers should be used with caution or not used in patients who have um, TAVR, especially with the Evolute Core valve. So in summary, several steps of angiography and PCI can be affected in TAVR patients, with the one being the most affected being coronary engagement, understanding the potential challenges and using various techniques, such as using a guide wire for rail or using a guide extension, can help engage the coronary arteries and allow successful procedure of the angiogram and PCI. Thank you.